wow, what a difference a few days makes in weather. We were at 80 degrees just a couple days ago. Got a lot of projects done during that time and uh, kind of got spoiled, I guess. But today it's probably 50, maybe, maybe not even, maybe 45. Sun's out nice. So I think we're going to go get started on that uh, tower mowing project that we showed you several weeks ago. I hope it's dry enough back there to be able to mow it. I think the way we're going to start that project is by using Johnny 5 and the TS-10, 10 foot bat wing, and we'll get it kind of, as Christy says, opened up and get some of the mowing out. And it might be able to mow most of it, but we got two or three other attachments we want to try and it's a great place to try them. So we may not do all this in one day. Yeah, I was wanting to show you some of the improvements we've made from an organizational standpoint. Not really to go into any detail, but rather just to show you that we're able to get all the tractors in now. We've made a, a lot of improvement. I can find most stuff now, most, but not everything. Let's see if we can get Johnny Five out. Okay, we're gonna take the weights off the back and we're gonna take the loader off the front. I always like mowing better without the loader, at least on this bigger tractor. I just have so much better visibility. It just feels like I get around a lot easier. Some folks have been asking for a little bit more of a review of Johnny Five here. I think I'm getting about ready to do that. I have several things that I think might be informative. You know, not just the typical features, but just some thoughts I have after having it for, I believe, 60 hours now. Uh, we haven't put a lot of hours on it. S several of the tasks that we've used it for would have been hard to have done with any other machine. Typically what I do with these weights is I put them on a pallet. I had to take off the secondary rack of 42 pound weights that I had on the back side of it because they were interfering with the disc the other day in the disking project that you probably saw. If you haven't seen that episode, go check it out. I think that bottom rack of weights may have been what was what allows it to balance when I set it on the pallet here. So we'll see how that goes. Check that out now. I think just by putting the bracket on here, I've got enough of balance here. These weights are heavy on the back. If you don't have something there, it uh, will tip over backwards. We'll see if that's enough to make it work. I think it's the Coyote tractor that gives you a rear three-point hitch control. It's actually a mechanical lever. I wish I had that. Now you'll notice I'm not running a quick hitch. This is a category two implement. I don't have a category two quick hitch. When it comes to taking off an implement like this, it can be difficult. There we go. That illustrates one of my favorite features on Johnny Five right there is those extendable arms. Now, the negative is, if it needed to collapse instead of extend, it wasn't going to help me. But if it needs to extend, or if I'm not quite back, look at the flexibility you have to hook up something up. See? Much better. And then when you get it put on like that, you back up just a little bit, and it will latch in. Like that. So I don't know. A, a quick hitch would still be nice, but this is a nice substitute. I've also had a lot of people ask me about how to take the loader off of Johnny 5. We'll do that here. It's not quite as easy as a 1 series or a 2 series, but it's not hard. So on each side, that's spring loaded. On each side we have to lower those brackets. Okay, I actually put this pallet on it simply because I didn't have place to store the loader without having the forks in the pallet. So it has nothing to do with the loader removal. Yeah, it's not something you can do from within the tractor seat, but hey, still just a couple minutes. The next step is to lower the loader. I sometimes like to be driving up a little bit while this is going on, hopefully not with a cat under the pallet. Good grief. This 
stored position. Grab this. That allows you to put it down. And you can pull it out like that. The second one won't let it come all the way out. Absolute shut off so that it won't come down on its own. Have to push that red button. And then sometimes this is a two handed job. No wonder my brother Tom wants me to lube that up a little bit, or at least on the combine. He puts a little bit of lube in there, I think that makes those work easier. Now on this TS-10, and quite frankly most any pull type attachment, you really shouldn't use a regular hitch pin. You need to use a bolt. Now, my family always inserts the bolt upside down. I'm not sure why. It seems to make sense to put the bolt in from the top and then if the nuts fall off, well, the bolt still might hold. But, you know what? If your family always does it that way, well, maybe I should too. Kind of getting lazy in my old age. Okay, that's the easy part. This is heavy. Whew, glad that's finished. Now I gotta get the hoses plugged in. Raising up. Folding up. I don't see how harmless farmer does anything. If I just try to hold a camera with one hand, I can't accomplish anything. If you haven't seen harmless farmer, Go check him out. That's That's got to be one of the most inspiring YouTubers that I've seen. It's called Harmless Farmer. For a moment there, I thought it was a giant popcorn popper instead of a mower. I find it amazing that you can mow over some pretty good sized trees one minute, and then the next minute you can expect it to do a good job of just mowing grass. As you can see, this mower is pulled by the drawbar. Most smaller brush mowers attach to the three-point hitch. There are advantages and disadvantages to each style. Maybe we should talk about some of those here. A pull type mower like this one doesn't take any weight off of your front wheels. It doesn't affect your ability to turn. It won't be too heavy for your three point hitch to pick up and it won't swing wildly behind you if you make a sharp turn. It's much easier to allow the mower to flex, hugging the ground, giving a closer cut across its entire width when you use a pull type approach. I don't know of any flex wing mowers that are three point mounted. If you do, let me know in the comments section. I'm interested in seeing it. Another difference is that a lot of pull type mowers have multiple blades, in this case three. More accurately, these are called spindles because there's actually two blades on each spindle. For some reason, which I can't fully explain, a three spindle mower will pull easier than a single spindle mower of the same size. The net result is that your small tractor can probably handle a wider pull type mower than it can handle attached to the three point hitch. I'm sure I'm oversimplifying here. For example, Rhino Ag has a 
two spindle three-point hitch attached mower. I'm not sure they may have a three spindle as well. There are also kind of hybrid mowers that attach to the lower two lift arms of your three-point hitch, but still use wheels in the back so that you don't have to lift the entire weight. Okay, let's talk about some of the advantages of a single spindle three-point hitch attached brush mower. First and foremost, they're cheaper. I hinted that the swinging wildly as being a disadvantage before, but it is actually an advantage a lot of the time. You can swing that mower around and put it right where you want it to trim pretty closely and pretty quickly. You can turn pretty short with it because your mower is always lined up with your tractor. You never have to worry about the PTO U joint being at too much of an angle. Now let's talk about some disadvantages. The single spindle approach just doesn't seem to do as good of a job. It doesn't generate as much lift under the deck and oftentimes you see the grass come back up a week or so later at where you've run over it with your tractor tires. We just don't see this behind the flex wing. We mentioned the weight and how heavy it is on the three point. This gets a lot worse with bigger mowers. A seven foot single spindle mower sticks way back there, creating a lot of leverage on your three point hitch. So which one should you choose? If you have a subcompact tractor and you're wanting to mow brush with it, a three point hitch mount is exactly what you need. You can get them for a thousand dollars or maybe even less and it's worlds better than the finish mower for cutting brush and tall weeds. If your tractor has 35 engine horsepower or more and you want to do a lot of field mowing, consider one of these flex wing mowers. As far as I know, Rhino is the only company that makes a 10 foot flex wing mower. This thing does a great job. I love it. I'm sure this comparison wasn't exhaustive. I probably left out some advantages and disadvantages. You can list them below. Be interested to hear your thoughts. Well, I'm able to mow this, no problem. Yeah. I mean, it, it goes right over it. I, I'm just not real happy about leaving all these, you know, stobs, I would call them. When I come back to mow it again, they'll be dried out. Are they gonna harm my tire? Or will the fact that they're kind of busted up already, will that mean they're weakened? I'm not really sure. So I'm just trying to decide how much of this stuff to mow and how much to put off for that super cool attachment in the future. I'm wondering if the Ventrac Tough Cut would cut these lower. It might. Yeah. You're just trying to get Vinny work. I love Vinny. I want to bring Vinny out with the Tough Cut. Well, Vinny would be a great partner for this TS-10 because he could trim a little easier. Yeah. Just back and forth and back and forth and trim. Yeah. And with this big tractor, I could get the big areas. It looks to me like some old dead brush here is, I don't know, it's, it's like been pushed in here in a windrow. Christy, we could potentially use a landscape rake or maybe one of those new attachments, I don't know, to pile that stuff up a little bit. There's some bigger logs and stuff in here. This one's been sawed on both ends, so yeah, that's uh, there's been a tree fall and some of it sawed up here. Yeah, this would be hard to mow over, wouldn't it? Yeah, I bet you somebody's got firewood out of it tree out here and then just left you know some of these small pieces looks like grapple stuff to me yeah this could be grappled we're gonna have to burn it otherwise find a way to dispose of it hot dogs anyone i got ideas how can you have a virtual hot dog roast they can watch us eat one speaking of eating let's go <laughs> and at dinner time somewhere it's got to be dinner time somewhere
Do you think we can mow over this one? It's pretty good sized. I think it's going to just totally explode, but it just keeps on cutting. Christy, we introduced this project to our viewers several weeks ago. You know, I, I ran around with Allie and kind of showed them. Yeah, showed them what we needed to clean up. Yeah. Now this project is, it's not really in a hurry. It is a paying project for us. But, right, but they're in another state. Yeah, so they're not really in a hurry. So what we thought we would do is maybe give this a kind of a, a playground for us, right, for this summer. Yeah, we can show how different things work here. Yeah, we've got several different attachments um, that we intend to show. Some of them you've seen before, like the TS-10. Uh, I'm not saying we're done with it. I think we'll probably use it more because we got some other easy mowing out there. And right. This thing does a great job, uh, especially when you've got bigger areas, right? right. I mean, it, it can mow a lot in a little yeah. time. And I'm just looking forward to having it mowed. Last year, we really kind of wanted to walk around here. We don't have a walking trail or path like we did at our old house and it was grown up and a little bit scary, really. Yeah, it wasn't pleasant to walk through. It was it no. was heavy enough that it wasn't pleasant to walk through. That's a good point. I don't think I really even mentioned that in the first episode, what our motivation was here. That's why we reached out to this place was we, we said, hey, we, we want it cleaned up. So that yeah, that's where we are. And I think it'll be nice when we get it all mowed up. We can kind of have a circle from our house. and You walk, I'll ride along an alley the gator. Lazy bum. <laughs> You need some exercise. I do. Uh, for your cheeseburger belly. I think that the lockdown that we're under here, the stay-at-home order, is doing nothing for my diet. No, I think we both ate a bag of chips. Yeah. Actually, you ate a bag of chips. I probably ate cookies. I did eat an entire bag of chips the other day, and I regretted it. Yeah. <laughs> sure was fun at the time, though. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying your quarantine. We Actually, it's not been bad for us. No, as long as we can go through the drive-thru at Culver's. Well, I do feel bad. We haven't talked any about COVID. I do feel bad for, for two sets of people, three sets, several sets of people, right? I mean, obviously the people who have the virus, we just, yeah. we really feel for and uh, yeah. uh, that's, that's... Praying for you. And, and the, the healthcare workers, the first responders, everybody that has to oh get my, close yeah. to it all the time uh, on a daily basis, that's, that's something that's really on our hearts as well. And thirdly, it seems to me like the workers that are out of work uh, are the lowest income uh, potentially the most needy workers, and, and I just right. find that a shame. Uh, it just seems like it's inflicting pain on those that, that can't handle it. Right, exactly. And uh, so this is, a, this is a tough situation, and we just continue to pray for, for everybody that's affected. Yeah. But yet at the same time, we continue to be thankful that God is watching out for us. Absolutely. And uh, we hope you guys stay safe and healthy as well. Yeah. We do appreciate you watching not only this episode, but all of our episodes, and uh, we'll try to keep them entertained. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with, with Tim. Tim. And Christy from the TS-10. We, we don't have a name, name for yeah. Tessie. Tessie? <laughs> That's probably pretty good. <laughs> She's got a temper. <laughs>